Now a word from our sponsor, MedBridge Healthcare. MedBridge Healthcare is a leading provider of sleep lab management services and home sleep apnea testing. MedBridge partners with hospitals, healthcare systems, and medical academic institutions to offer comprehensive, fully integrated services for sleep disorders. Hold up, hold up. Folks, we've got some exciting news for you right now, right here on Sleep Tech Talk. We want to let you know that we are looking for 2023's Person of the Year. That's right, Sleep Tech Talk's 2023 Person of the Year. How are we going to do that? Well, listen up. Every, any guest that's been on the show so far and any guest that's going to be on our show for this year, 2023, are all nominees or all candidates for this recognition. And how you can help is by listening and or viewing that specific episode. We're going to be counting the number of plays for each episode, or we're going to be counting the number of listens for each episode, and taking that into consideration. If you have anybody that you think should be a candidate, let us know, and we will see what we can do to get them on board as a nominee. At the same time, we need your help to make this happen, to select that person of the year. Along the way, we hope to introduce some other awards as well. But in the, in the meanwhile, do everybody a favor, do us a favor, and listen in to your favorite guest. So by early next year, 2024, we'll be announcing the winners. Now back to the show. Lights out. All right. Welcome, everyone, once again to another episode of Sleep Tech Talk. If you don't get it right the first time, we get it right again. And with that being said, we have a fantastic episode with a fabulous guest here with us. Thank you all so much for joining. We can't appreciate you enough for all the views, all the listens, all the likes, subscriptions. Most importantly, do not forget to, uh, to share this with your friends. We've got so many sleep techs out there. Be sure to spread the love. With that being said, Emerson, what's going on today? Who hey, do we have? Yeah, we've got a great guest coming to us from the Twin Cities of Minnesota. Dr. Audrey Wells is joining us today. We're very excited about this. Dr. Wells is the founder and CEO of Super Sleep MD. Um, she studied medicine at the University of Michigan. She's a Wolverine and is uh, board certified in both pediatric and adult sleep medicine through the University of New Mexico. Um, she has been practicing for, for many years and is, is really here today to tell us about what she's doing with Super Sleep MD. It's an innovative way to practice sleep medicine, and we're really excited to have you today, Dr. Wells. One of the things that we love to take a moment to do is just ask how, how you got into sleep medicine, because clearly in medical school, you have lots of options. What was it about sleep medicine that, that drew you in? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, it kind of dawned on me at, when I was at a conference uh, for ATS, American Thor Thoracic Society. Uh, I was in a, a day-long educational session about cystic fibrosis, and ironically, I was falling asleep. <laughs> so I got up to walk around, and I saw another session going on all about sleep medicine, and truly, that's the first time I even learned that was an option. Um, at my training program at WashU, I was doing pediatric pulmonary medicine and kind of bumping up against the limit of what I could tolerate uh, with overnight call and being in the hospital long hours. And so it was kind of this intersection of serendipity and personal need. <laughs> because I realized on some level that I wasn't going to be able to sustain the ICU environment. So I ended up switching. I got into um, the sleep medicine program at UNM, which is a fantastic uh, program there, and um, ended up getting fully trained through the fellowship and then went on to have a nice career, uh, basically talking about what I love, which is healthy and sustainable sleep practices. Now you 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 moved to to Minneapolis, got settled there. How long did you practice in sleep medicine, and how did you kind of transition from the the traditional brick and mortar world of of sleep to where you are now? 
I was in, uh, I was practicing in Albuquerque for 10 years uh, before I left in, and we moved up to St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, and uh, at that point, uh, COVID haven't, hadn't happened yet. So it was a more traditional employed position where uh, I was going to a couple of different clinics to see patients. Um, in the COVID era, as you know, there was a quick uh, transition to seeing patients remotely through telehealth. And fortunately, sleep medicine is really amenable to that. And for me, I like efficiency. I like to keep things snappy. And so just having you know, patients uh, access to me through the telehealth platform ended up being a real eye-opener for how efficiently that could be run. All right. So when you look at that, you know, that was a, a transition for a lot of people because um, we're, we're so used to that personal touch. Mm -hmm. When how did you how did you make that transition? Because when a lot of our techs are doing more, uh, you know, telehealth type work, you know, whether it's doing coaching or things like that. And a lot of, you know, clearly a lot of physicians have already done this. But how did you transition? Because you, you seem like a very personable physician. How did you maintain that in a in a telehealth or virtual type environment? Yeah, I think there's a learning curve with that. Um, there's the technical issues that can happen. Uh, there are kind of, um, I think there's a need to amp up the connection through the screen, which can be difficult for some people. Um, so I think just really paying attention to what level of connection I was making with folks that I was trying to help went a long way in kind of enabling trust for that doctor patient relationship. Um, so spending a little extra time, you know, asking about their experience with the pandemic, asking, you know, how things have been affecting them. Uh, were they able to still enjoy themselves and um, get away from their kids or their adult children because, you know, in lockdown, everybody was kind of going stir crazy a bit and it could certainly affect their stress level and sleep. So, you know, reaching out and trying to connect with people on that level, I felt was uh, always a positive thing. So doc, that, that's a very interesting piece that you just said right now. So would you say your bedside manner had to change or adapt to the changes because of the telehealth situation? Um, a bit. I, I think that just being uh, really acknowledging of any barriers that patients would have to get to the telehealth platform helped them to feel more comfortable. Like um, how long did they have to wait before they had an appointment with me? Um, were they able to get their documents signed, the questionnaires done? Were they able to get on screen okay? I think that just helped to whew, slow everything down. Now we're here to talk about you and your symptoms. So how did that, you know, you, 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 bring, you bring Super Sleep MD along. At what point did you feel like, yeah, I love tipping points. Yeah. When was your tipping point to realize, you know, this could be the best way to deliver sleep medicine. What was your tipping point moment? How did you, and what did that transition look like? Um, when I was seeing patients in my employed position with the University of Minnesota Physicians Group, um, it became clear to me that this online interaction was efficient. And then I realized this could be scalable even. And one of my frustrations with, uh, with sleep medicine and maybe the medical delivery system as a whole is that it can be a barrier. Um, so routinely patients have had to wait to see me for two, three, four months just to get an appointment. And then their sleep study is scheduled out uh, a number of weeks or months later. And then they come see me again for their results. And then, you know, this whole time I'm trying to convince them that their sleep is important. And yet the timeline does not support that at all. Um, in addition, I was very, I was very frustrated with this idea that all I'm doing is diagnosing 
diagnosing, diagnosing. And sleep apnea is the main thing I'm diagnosing because that's kind of the bread and butter along with insomnia of sleep medicine. But I'm not really using my skills to help people get treated in a way that is sustainable, where their sleep is improved, where they're not having bed dread at night when they think about putting on their CPAP mask. So what I decided to do was step out of the medical system and create Super Sleep MD, which is a way for me to support people with their sleep apnea journey in a way that I couldn't behind the doors of my clinic. And so what Super Sleep MD does is it provides education to people that's curated by me. So this is all very credible information based on my years in the field. And I, I calculated, I've, I've had about 45,000 patient interactions. So taking all of that knowledge and making it available in one place and easy to consume online was the first objective. And then I started working on mechanisms of providing support. And that means group coaching. That means getting people in a video call similar to what we're doing now and saying, okay, what can I help you with? I'm at your disposal. And again, I'm bringing my medical knowledge, even though we don't have a doctor patient relationship, we all know that there's a finite number of questions when it comes to using treatment for sleep apnea. And I look at that broadly. So it may be CPAP, it may be oral appliance, it may be surgery, whatever the patient chooses, I can help them to work through the bumps in the road. Are you a sleep tech looking for new opportunities? Well, MedBridge Healthcare is one of the largest employers of sleep technologists and they are growing. If you are a sleep technologist interested in a new position, potential paid relocation, or looking for a career advancement, consider a career with MedBridge Healthcare. Now back to the show. I love that concept that you just mentioned, uh, the, the finite number of issues. And when you have that group situation, you, what I've seen in my experience as well is that there are a number of people that have these questions but are almost afraid to ask. But when you have the group there, somebody or the other will speak up and they'll have the same question somebody else had who was afraid to speak up. And that fosters a discussion. And those people who were relatively quiet begin to join in the conversation. Is that what you what you've been seeing in your experience now? You're exactly right. And, you know, I think it's really helpful for from a reciprocity uh, standpoint as well. People want to help each other. That helps you feel like you're not so alone in this process. It helps you kind of normalize the idea that this, um, this treatment, however it looks for you, somebody else is going through it. And I think also some people are not able to pinpoint their question very well until they hear it from someone else. And then a light bulb goes off and they're like, yes, I'm having that trouble too. I just didn't know how to articulate it. Yeah, that's incredible because, you know, when you look at, at, you know, Jerry and I spending years with Philips and Respironics, it was so frustrating with the, the CPAP patient because you look at the data and pretty much after the DME gets them past that 90 days, the attrition is ridiculous. You yes. know, there's really that, that, that connection is lost. So how do you maintain the connection? Because I think that's a, a key element to, to this. I mean, there's nothing... I mean, we've got plenty of data that talks about empowering the patient, educating the patient, but how do you hold on to them and keep that connection that really can pull them into a lifetime of change? This is a fantastic thing to talk about because I think it's a piece that's missing from efforts to increase uh, adherence to CPAP treatment, especially, but even some of the other sleep apnea treatments could benefit. Um, I actually went, I did two things uh, in addition to kind of taking things into the online space. I went and got board certified in obesity medicine because I wanted to understand how people who struggle with their weight have that overlapping uh, issue with their sleep. And the two are bi-directional. The other thing I did was I became a certified life coach. 
Now, I already had the cognitive behavioral therapy uh, experience from treating people with insomnia, but the life coaching principles are very accessible for behavioral change. And that's really what we're talking about, right? We're talking about incorporating a machine into your nighttime routine. It's taking up real estate on your bedside table. And yes, you're going to look like a fighter pilot, but the, the trade-off is the value is you get healthy sleep. Your brain gets a continuous supply of oxygen and a reliable supply of sleep so that you can function better. Now, one of the things that I uh, try to do is, is be humble at all stages of the process because I'm learning just as much as the people that I interact with. And that's because I'm a human being and I have sleep problems too. Surprise. <laughs> so even as a sleep medicine doc, I still have problems with my sleep. And I try to relate with people on that level because I think in a way it's re reassuring that this is a very organic process. Uh, so in addition to uh, the website that has my courses and the group coaching experiences, I also created a private Facebook group where people who have sleep apnea can go and kind of talk about their questions. Even though it's not in real time, there's still a lot of reciprocity with this group. And I think, again, it's really helpful to know that you're not the only one and there's value to be had with kind of finding your people. You know, I, that's really exciting. I'm, I'm also a life coach and it is probably one of the most fascinating things I did for myself. Yeah. I think I benefited more from it than uh, the people I, I, I coach, but how do you, you know, one of the things, especially in sleep technology, you know, we've got a lot of, of techs that have moved into coaching roles. How have you really incorporated that as a physician? Because, you know, one of the things I'm enjoying about our conversation today is so many physicians, you know, they diagnose, they prescribe, and that's really the end of the relationship. You're really, you're really doing patient care at a whole nother level because you're, you're invested <laughs> in, in their life journey. How have you brought coaching into that? Because there's so many different strategies that life coaching teaches mm -hmm. in the certification. What have you done to build that into this process? Because I could see that being part, a key piece of why you're able to create that, that long-term connection with the patient. It's, um, I, I think in sleep medicine, there's this uh, idea of a sleep coach. And in my mind, it's a little bit different than what I'm doing as a coach for the one-on-one -on -one clients that I see. Um, what I do for, for people is to kind of help them through that relationship with themselves. And you may be... I, able to identify with this a bit, but when you're lying in bed at night in the dark and quiet, you're with yourself in a way that you're typically not during the day with all kinds of distractions. And we've always got these guys. Um, so if you don't have a great relationship with yourself, if you don't trust yourself to follow through with the, uh, with the practices that are good for your health, that tends to translate into problems with getting to sleep. You're not managing your stress. Something's out of alignment in your life. You don't have integrity or you're kind of waking up in the middle of the night, replaying all of this, the problems that you had during the day. That's where life coaching comes in with cognitive restructuring, questioning those maladaptive beliefs that are going to just erode any sense of calm that you need when to get back to sleep. So <clears throat> it's a little bit different than like, okay, let's use your CPAP mask every night. It's digging deeper and really a workout for the mind. What is your experience? I'm curious. You know, it's, it's been, it's been interesting. I think that you're right. It's for me, I, I found that how do we tie people to, to a greater objective? Because I think so often, you know, when we look at, you know, where coaching began in healthcare, I remember having a coach, you know, through my, through my payer and it was terrible. It was like, well, did you do this? Did you do this? You know, X, mm -hmm. Y, and Z versus, you know, where do you want to be with your health? Mm -hmm. Do you, do you care about grandchildren? You know, walking your daughter down the aisle and, and how do so, you want to spend the last 10 years of your life? <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so I think that's that was a big pivot in how I began to talk to clients was really bringing them back to their larger goal and mm -hmm. keeping them focused on it because everything we do, whether it's it's changing careers or or you know managing our diseases or just our our health, it's easy to 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 you know as Daniel Kahneman talks about fall back into system one thinking. Yes. And yeah, you know, we don't like system two thinking. <laughs> yeah, you know, we like to to just keep it simple. And I think that coaching pulls the person back and says, okay, system one or the one you had wasn't really working. <laughs> so let's get mm -hmm. you to a, a level where you can really have a better, a better approach to life. So yeah, I I love it. It helped me probably more than the people I talk to, but I absolutely think it's been a fantastic part of, of my career. I agree. And for me, it becomes part of a comprehensive health plan. You know, it, there's a whole person that I, I see when they're coming to me for sleep issues. And fortunately or unfortunately, whatever is keeping you up at night should probably be your first target for uh, change. So, you know, I love setting goals. I love, you know, digging deep with people to find out what really is going to inspire you. Um, I was, I was always one of those people that wanted more time with patients when they would come for their 20 minute follow up visit. So I'm trying to make a real difference for people here. And certainly, I think coaching is part of that. Doc, it's it's very obvious uh, from our conversation, your passion. And like you said, you you truly want to make a real difference in the patient's lives. And I think that echoes with almost all of us here. But we are out of time, and uh, and uh, as much as I wanted to continue the conversation, we we've got to we've got to close. But before we do, is there anything that you want to talk about real quickly that we haven't had a chance to touch on yet? Yeah, I I would really like um, your listeners and your audience to visit SupersleepMD.com. That's uh, my online platform for sleep apnea treatment support and education. Additionally, uh, in February of 2024, February 6th through the 12th, I am hosting an online summit called Sleep Deep, New Approaches in Treating Sleep Apnea and Insomnia. It's free for the week that it airs. I'm interviewing experts in the field. It's a really exciting way to elevate these two conditions into the public eye and get a handle on what it means to get treated and finally get the healthy sleep you deserve. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, free education and we can't say no to that. So uh, we'll be sure to have that information and be in the show notes. Uh, and uh, Doc, thank you so much for joining us. We sincerely appreciate it. My pleasure. Great to talk to you. And folks out there, great talking to you as well. And folks out there, Thank you so much once again for joining us. It's been uh, it's been excellent. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, you know, do all the things and be sure to stay tuned until the next episode. And until the next episode, we say lights on. Sleep Tech Talk is sponsored by React Health. React Health, headquartered in Sarasota, Florida, is a sleep and respiratory device manufacturer. We have curated our portfolio to offer unwavering support to physicians and DMEs across the continuum of patient care. Within our LunaPAP device line, each offering is FDA approved, encompassing CPAP, APAP, Bilevel, and Bilevel ST models. Our thoughtfully selected array of PAP interfaces and accessories complement our LunaPAP device line while accommodating diverse patient requirements. Before we go, we would like to thank our sponsor, MedBridge Healthcare. MedBridge Healthcare is developing innovative inpatient, post-discharge, and population health programs to screen comorbid conditions, diagnose, and treat sleep disorders. Learn more about their innovative solutions and career opportunities at medbridgehealthcare.com. Once again, you can learn more about their innovative solutions and career opportunities at medbridgehealthcare.com.